Edith Renfro Smith is about to turn 109 years old, and she's ready to talk about everything. Everything except how she's feeling. Don't ask me. I am not sick. I am old. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be 109 years well, old. You know, birthdays come around every year. Smith has seen and experienced more than almost anyone alive. Her first birthday was two weeks before the start of World War I. 1914 is when I arrived. So you have been alive for two pandemics, two world wars, the moon landing, the fall of the Soviet Union, the election of President Obama. When you think about all of the history that you've seen in your lifetime, what are your reflections? I think this has been the greatest centuries we have seen. And so many changes that made changes in the life of an individual. The technological advances have been staggering. She's lived through the dawn of radio, television, and the internet, but... So that was something so exciting. Nothing wowed her like her family's first telephone back in 1917, when less than a third of the country had them. First thing I learned was the telephone on the wall. I was three. And I, and I asked my mother what that was. It was so big. Hello. Ah, oh, shoot. Hello. Today, the phone is still a marvel. Okay, I'll, I'll call you later, okay? Okay, bye -bye. Thank you. In her apartment at Brookdale Senior Living on the north side, when she's not chatting with friends, she's standing over a stove. Okay, now I'm going to get the sugar that I'm going to put in to the jam. She's making her famous strawberry jam, which she jars, and if it takes that, seems like it takes a long time to you. It's the stove fault, not mine. Anne gives away to her neighbors. She's a long way from where she started, 286 miles west of Chicago in Grinnell, Iowa. Growing up was a learning experience. The county's population at the time was 20,000, with only 55 black people, according to the U.S. Census. Her grandparents were enslaved people. Her father, Lee, worked as a cook. Her mother, Eva, was a laundress. See, other people say maybe my mother always said do. Who emphasized education and etiquette. She never let us call anyone a name. She never allowed any profanity, and always be polite. That was, that was so emphasized. Say please, don't just say gimme, say please. From her mother, she learned manners and a mantra that would imbue her with confidence and shape her life. Her mother would say, there's no one better than you. And you remember what I told you? There's no one, no one. They may have a lot more money, they may have a lot more hair, and they may have more clothes, but still, you are the only one named Edith Smith. And, and I was excited to say, oh, I'm the only one got that name. <laughs> Grinnell College was just a few blocks from her home. Being the old girl of a different color made no difference. She played almost every sport imaginable. In every photo, she's the only black person. I love sports of all kinds. I played basketball, I played baseball, I played hockey. I did everything that they did. Anybody say sports, I was in it. In 1937, she became a pioneer, the first black person to graduate from Grinnell College. It was the Great Depression when one in four Americans were out of work. She left Iowa for Chicago in search of a job and found one as a secretary at the YWCA. I didn't know how many jobs I had had between 1937 and 1954. So I had a whole lot. 
I started out as where I had a job for the state, I had a job for the city, I had jobs anywhere. They pay me more money. She met her husband, Henry Smith, in 1940. They raised two daughters on Chicago's South Side. Eventually, she became a sixth grade teacher at Theodore Herzl Elementary School, a public school in Chicago. I taught from 1954 to 1976. So you've been retired for almost 50 years. You hear it. You hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and my retirement has been wonderful because I used it to volunteer. In 2019, Grinnell awarded her an honorary doctorate. And in 2022, the college named a civic engagement building in her honor. In 2009, Mayor Richard M. Daley inducted her into the Chicago Senior Citizens Hall of Fame. At the age of 98, she retired from volunteering, but not from baking. Oh, just look, I got all of these gifts. Yeah. Ahead of her birthday, Oh, look what I've got. She opened a few presents from her friends at Brookdale with her 77-year-old daughter, Alice. I'll help. By her side. She exuded the joy. I'm making jam. Of someone 100 years her junior. I've been looking for something this size to put the strawberries in. At 109, it's not so much how she feels as how she lives. An example of positivity. So lovely. And purpose. Everybody always wants to know when we talk to somebody who's made it to 100 or beyond, what you think the secret to a long life is. Do you have any wisdom to share with us? But I'll tell you one thing. Have a goal. Never let you tell anyone tell you, you can't say, I am going to try. And that will make the difference for when you make it or not. Because even if you don't know about it, but if you're going to try it, you're going to find out whether you can do it or not. You have to have a goal. Ooh, look at here. In Chicago, Mike Lowe, WGN News. Uh, no, oh, you didn't notice that? No. Oh. Happy birthday, yeah. Edith. Hope you have a wonderful one mm. and many more. Yeah, absolutely. 